In material science, segregation refers to the enrichment of atoms, ions, or molecules at a microscopic region in a materials system. While the terms segregation and adsorption are essentially synonymous, in practice, segregation is often used to describe the partitioning of molecular constituents to defects from solid solutions, whereas adsorption is generally used to describe such partitioning from liquids and gases to surfaces. The molecular level segregation discussed in this article is distinct from other types of materials phenomena that are often called segregation, such as particle segregation in granular materials, and phase separation or precipitation, wherein molecules are segregated into macroscopic regions of different compositions. Segregation has many practical consequences, ranging from the formation of soap bubbles, to microstructural engineering in materials science, to the stabilization of colloidal suspensions. Segregation can occur in various materials classes. In polycrystalline solids, segregation occurs at defects, such as dislocations, grain boundaries, stacking faults, or the interface between two phases. In liquid solutions, chemical gradients exist near second phases and surfaces due to combinations of chemical and electrical effects. Segregation which occurs in well-equilibrated systems due to the intrinsic to the chemical properties of the system is termed equilibrium segregation. Segregation that occurs due to the processing history of the sample but that would disappear at long times is termed non-equilibrium segregation. topic history equilibrium segregation is associated with the lattice disorder at interfaces where there are sites of energy different from those within the lattice at which the solute atoms can deposit themselves the equilibrium segregation is so termed because the solute atoms segregate themselves to the interface or surface in accordance with the statistics of thermodynamics in order to minimize the overall free energy of the system. This sort of partitioning of solute atoms between the grain boundary and the lattice was predicted by Maclean in 1957. Non equilibrium segregation, first theorized by Westbrook in 1964, occurs as a result of solutes coupling to vacancies which are moving to grain boundary sources or sinks during quenching or application of stress. It can also occur as a result of solute pileup at a moving interface. There are two main features of non equilibrium segregation, by which it is most easily distinguished from equilibrium segregation. In the non equilibrium effect, the magnitude of the segregation increases with increasing temperature and the alloy can be homogenized without further quenching because its lowest energy state corresponds to a uniform solute distribution. In contrast, the equilibrium segregated state, by definition, is the lowest energy state in a system that exhibits equilibrium segregation, and the extent of the segregation effect decreases with increasing temperature. The details of non-equilibrium segregation are not going to be discussed here, but can be found in the review by Harries and Marwick. Importance. Segregation of a solute to surfaces and grain boundaries in a solid produces a section of material with a discrete composition and its own set of properties that can have important and often deleterious effects on the overall properties of the material. These zones with an increased concentration of solute can be thought of as the cement between the bricks of a building. The structural integrity of the building depends not only on the material properties of the brick, but also greatly on the properties of the long lines of mortar in between. Segregation to grain boundaries, for example, can lead to grain boundary fracture as a result of temper brittleness, creep embrittlement, stress relief cracking of weldments, hydrogen embrittlement, environmentally assisted fatigue, grain boundary corrosion, and some kinds of intergranular stress corrosion cracking. A very interesting and important field of study of impurity segregation processes involves AES of grain boundaries of materials. This technique includes tensile fracturing of special specimens directly inside the UHV chamber of the auger electron spectrometer that was developed by Elian. 
Segregation to grain boundaries can also affect their respective migration rates, and so affects centurability, as well as the grain boundary diffusivity although sometimes these effects can be used advantageously, segregation to free surfaces also has important consequences involving the purity of metallurgical samples. Because of the favorable segregation of some impurities to the surface of the material, a very small concentration of impurity in the bulk of the sample can lead to a very significant coverage of the impurity on a cleaved surface of the sample. In applications where an ultra-pure surface is needed for example, in some nanotechnology applications, the segregation of impurities to surfaces requires a much higher purity of bulk material than would be needed if segregation effects didn't exist. The following figure illustrates this concept with two cases in which the total fraction of impurity atoms is 0 0.25 25 impurity atoms in 100 total. In the representation on the left, these impurities are equally distributed throughout the sample, and so the fractional surface coverage of impurity atoms is also approximately 0.25. In the representation to the right, however, the same number of impurity atoms are shown segregated on the surface, so that an observation of the surface composition would yield a much higher impurity fraction in this case, about 0.69. In fact, in this example, were impurities to completely segregate to the surface, an impurity fraction of just 0.36 could completely cover the surface of the material. In an application where surface interactions are important, this result could be disastrous. While the intergranular failure problems noted above are sometimes severe, they are rarely the cause of major service failures in structural steels, for example, as suitable safety margins are included in the designs. Perhaps the greater concern is that with the development of new technologies and materials with new and more extensive mechanical property requirements, and with the increasing impurity contents as a result of the increased recycling of materials, we may see intergranular failure in materials and situations not seen currently. Thus, a greater understanding of all of the mechanisms surrounding segregation might lead to being able to control these effects in the future. Modeling potentials, experimental work, and related theories are still being developed to explain these segregation mechanisms for increasingly complex systems. Topic: <theories>, theories of segregation. Several theories describe the equilibrium segregation activity in materials. The adsorption theories for the solid-solid interface and the solid vacuum surface are direct analogues of theories well known in the field of gas adsorption on the free surfaces of solids. Topic: <laughs> Langmuir-MacLane theory for surface and grain boundary segregation in binary systems. This is the earliest theory specifically for grain boundaries, in which MacLean uses a model of p-solute atoms distributed at random amongst n lattice sites and p-solute atoms distributed at random amongst n independent grain boundary sites. The total free energy due to the solute atoms is then G equals P E plus P E minus k t lane n n minus lane n minus p p n minus p p Display style G equals P plus P E K T lane N N lane N P P N P P where E and E are energies of the solute atom in the lattice and in the grain boundary, respectively, and the KLN term represents the configurational entropy of the arrangement of the solute atoms in the bulk and grain boundary. MacLean used basic statistical mechanics to find the fractional monolayer of segregant X B. Display style x underscore b 
at which the system energy was minimized at the equilibrium state, differentiating G with respect to P, noting that the sum of P and P is constant. Here the grain boundary analog of Langmuir adsorption at free surfaces becomes X B X B 0 minus X B equals X C 1 minus X C exp display style frac x underscore b x underscore b carrot 0 x underscore b equals frac x underscore c 1 x underscore c exp minus delta g r t display style left frac delta g r t right here x B zero display style x underscore b carrot zero is the fraction of the grain boundary monolayer available for segregated atoms at saturation. X b display style x underscore b is the actual fraction covered with segregant x c display style x underscore c is the bulk solute molar fraction and delta g display style delta g is the free energy of segregation per mole of solute values of delta g display style delta g were estimated by maclean using the elastic strain energy e e l Display style e underscore l released by the segregation of solute atoms. The solute atom is represented by an elastic sphere fitted into a spherical hole in an elastic matrix continuum. The elastic energy associated with the solute atom is given by e e l equals twenty four pi k mu 0 r 0 r 1 minus r 0 2 3 k plus 4 mu 0 Display style e underscore l equals frac twenty four pi mathrm k mu underscore zero r underscore zero r underscore one r underscore zero carrot two three mathrm k plus four mu underscore zero where k display style mathrm k is the solute bulk modulus mu zero Display style mu underscore zero is the matrix shear modulus and R zero display style R underscore zero and R one display style R underscore one air the atomic radii of the matrix and impurity atoms, respectively. This method gives values correct to within a factor of 2 as compared with experimental data for grain boundary segregation, but a greater accuracy is obtained using the method of Sear and Hondros, described in the following section. <laughs> Free energy of grain boundary segregation in binary systems Using truncated BET theory, the gas adsorption theory developed by Brunauer, Emmett, and Teller, Sear and Hondros write the solid state analog as X B X B zero minus X B equals X C X 
C zero exp display style frac x underscore b x underscore b carrot zero x underscore b equals frac x underscore c x underscore c carrot zero exp minus delta g r t display style left frac delta g r t right where delta g equals delta g plus delta g s o l display style delta g equals delta g plus delta g underscore sol x c 0 display style x underscore c caret 0 is the solid solubility which is known for many elements and can be found in metallurgical handbooks in the dilute limit a slightly soluble substance has x c 0 equals exp delta g s o l r t display style x underscore c caret 0 equals exp left frac delta g underscore sol rt right so the above equation reduces to that found with the langmuir maclean theory this equation is only valid for x c x c 0 display style x underscore c leq x underscore c caret 0 if there is an excess of solute such that a second phase appears the solute content is limited to x c 0 display style x underscore c caret 0 and the equation becomes x b x b 0 minus x b equals exp minus delta g r t display style frac x underscore b x underscore b caret 0 x underscore b equals exp left frac delta g r t right this theory for grain boundary segregation derived from truncated bet theory provides excellent agreement with experimental data obtained by auger electron spectroscopy and other techniques topic more complex systems Other models exist to model more complex binary systems. The above theories operate on the assumption that the segregated atoms are non-interacting. If, in a binary system, adjacent adsorbate atoms are allowed an interaction energy omega such that they can attract when omega display style omega is negative or repel when omega display style omega is positive each other the solid state analog of the fowler adsorption theory is developed as x b x b 0 minus x b equals x c 1 minus x c exp minus delta g minus z 1 omega x b x b 0 r t 
Display style frac x underscore b x underscore b carrot zero x underscore b equals frac x underscore c one x underscore c exp left frac delta g z underscore one omega frac x underscore b x underscore b carrot zero r t right when omega display style omega is zero. This theory reduces to that of Lang, Muir, and MacLean. However, as omega display style omega becomes more negative, the segregation shows progressively sharper rises as the temperature falls until eventually the rise in segregation is discontinuous at a certain temperature, as shown in the following figure. Gutman, in 1975, extended the Fowler theory to allow for interactions between two co-segregating species in multi-component systems. This modification is vital to explaining the segregation behavior that results in the intergranular failures of engineering materials. More complex theories are detailed in the work by Gutman and McLean and Gutman. Topic: The free energy of surface segregation in binary systems. The Langmuir-MacLean equation for segregation, when using the regular solution model for a binary system, is valid for surface segregation, although sometimes the equation will be written replacing x b display style x underscore b with x s display style x underscore s the free energy of surface segregation is delta g s equals delta h s minus t delta s Display style delta g underscore s equals delta h underscore s t delta s. The enthalpy is given by minus delta h s equals gamma zero s minus gamma one s minus 2 h m z x c 1 minus x c Display style delta h underscore s equals gamma underscore zero carrot s gamma underscore one carrot s frac two h underscore m z x underscore c one x underscore c z one x c minus x s plus z v x c minus 1 2 plus 24 pi k mu 0 r 0 r 1 minus r 0 2 3 k plus 4 mu 0 Display style left Z underscore one x underscore C x underscore S plus Z underscore V left x underscore C frac one two right right plus frac twenty four pi mathram K mu underscore zero R underscore zero R underscore one R underscore zero carrot two three mathram K plus four mu underscore zero where gamma zero Display style Gamma underscore zero and Gamma one Display style Gamma underscore one 
air matrix surface energies without and with solute H one display style H underscore one is their heat of mixing Z and Z one display style Z underscore one Air the coordination numbers in the matrix and at the surface, and Z V display style Z underscore V is the coordination number for surface atoms to the layer below. The last term in this equation is the elastic strain energy E E L display style E underscore L given above, and is governed by the mismatch between the solute and the matrix atoms. For solid metals, the surface energies scale with the melting points. The surface segregation enrichment ratio increases when the solute atom size is larger than the matrix atom size and when the melting point of the solute is lower than that of the matrix. A chemisorbed gaseous species on the surface can also have an effect on the surface composition of a binary alloy. In the presence of a coverage of a chemisorbed species θ, it is proposed that the langmuir maclean model is valid with the free energy of surface segregation given by delta G C H E M display style delta G underscore chem where delta G C H E M equals Delta G S plus E B minus E A theta Display style delta G underscore chem equals delta G underscore S plus E underscore B E underscore A theta E A Display style E underscore A and E B Display style E underscore B are the chemisorption energies of the gas on solute and matrix B and theta display style theta is the fractional coverage at high temperatures evaporation from the surface can take place causing a deviation from the maclean equation at lower temperatures both grain boundary and surface segregation can be limited by the diffusion of atoms from the bulk to the surface or interface topic Kinetics of segregation In some situations where segregation is important, the segregant atoms do not have sufficient time to reach their equilibrium level as defined by the above adsorption theories. The kinetics of segregation become a limiting factor and must be analyzed as well. Most existing models of segregation kinetics follow the Maclean approach. In the model for equilibrium monolayer segregation, the solute atoms are assumed to segregate to a grain boundary from two infinite half crystals or to a surface from one infinite half crystal. The diffusion in the crystals is described by Fick's laws. The ratio of the solute concentration in the grain boundary to that in the adjacent atomic layer of the bulk is given by an enrichment ratio beta display style beta most models assume beta display style beta to be a constant but in practice this is only true for dilute systems with low segregation levels in this dilute limit if x b 0 display style x underscore b caret 0 is one monolayer beta Display style beta is given as beta equals x b x c equals exp minus delta g r t x 
c 0 display style beta equals frac x underscore b x underscore c equals frac exp left frac delta g r t right x underscore c caret 0 the kinetics of segregation can be described by the following equation x b t minus x b 0 x b infinity minus x b 0 equals 1 minus exp f d t beta 2 f 2 Display style frac x underscore b t x underscore b zero x underscore b inf t x underscore b zero equals one exp left frac f d t beta carrot two f carrot two right e r f c f d t beta two f two one Two Display style text ERFC left frac FDT beta carrot two F carrot two right carrot frac one two where F equals four Display style F equals four for grain boundaries and one for the free surface X B T Display style x underscore b t is the boundary content at time t. Display style t d. Display style d is the solute bulk diffusivity f. Display style f is related to the atomic sizes of the solute and the matrix b. Display style b and a display styler respectively by f equals a 3 b minus 2 display style f equals a caret 3 b caret minus 2 for short times this equation is approximated by x b T minus x b zero x b infinity minus x b zero equals two beta f f d t Pi equals two beta B two a three F D T Pi Display style frac x underscore b t x underscore b zero x underscore b inf t x underscore b zero equals frac two beta f s q r t frac f d t pi equals frac two beta frac b carrot two a carrot three s q r t frac f d t pi. In practice, beta display style beta is not a constant but generally falls as segregation proceeds due to saturation if beta display style beta starts high and falls rapidly as the segregation saturates the above equation is valid until the point of saturation topic in metal castings 
All metal castings experience segregation to some extent, and a distinction is made between macrosegregation and microsegregation. Microsegregation refers to localized differences in composition between dendrite arms, and can be significantly reduced by a homogenizing heat treatment. This is possible because the distances involved typically on the order of 10 to 100 micrometers are sufficiently small for diffusion to be a significant mechanism. This is not the case in macrosegregation. Therefore, macrosegregation in metal castings cannot be remedied or removed using heat treatment. <inaudible> <inaudible> Further reading <inaudible> See also <inaudible>